Okay, so um, let's make a start. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the lands that I will be speaking to you from today, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations. I also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on which each of you are living and working from today and pay my respects to the elders past and present. So I guess um, this is the official opening of ISF 2021, another unfortunately um, virtual version, but what can we do? Um, of course, uh, you, you all know that uh, our efforts um, to actually be in physical spaces uh, did not pay off. Uh, unfortunately, the, the pandemic uh, got the better of us, um, forced us to shut down the hubs. Um, but having said that, uh, you know, the virtual form of the conference uh, has been uh, a success. Um, let me just show you a couple of um, slides about the participation and how our institute is faring at the moment. So um, we've had, as of a few minutes ago, 660 registered participants for this ISF, which makes it even bigger than last year's, which was uh, a great success to start off with as the first virtual one. Uh, we have people from 50 countries um, and 353 presentations. There's a lot of new members, members who have joined, which is uh, really, really uh, pleasing to see. Um, let me just revert a little bit and talk a little bit about our membership. So this is a, a time series um, of our membership since 2006. And you can see it hovered around the 500 mark for a while. Um, and this is highly correlated with the ISF, I guess. Um, this is uh, 2019 in Thessaloniki, where we start going upwards trend. Uh, there are sort of announced there's that, uh, you know, I was aiming as president to get over a thousand memberships and we have gotten over that number. Not in the fashion that I envisioned it to get over uh, that number, but, you know, nonetheless, we're now up to 1,285 members, which is an absolute uh, fantastic uh, number to see. Um, Although um, the ISF uh, is the main product of our, is one of the main products of our membership, um, there are of course other, other initiatives and other uh, products that our members are interested in and you will hear um, from our directors for many of these. Um, I would like to actually single out and, and sort of highlight um, a little bit about the contribution of our ECRs, the early career researchers, and uh, their, their, their important contributions to the Institute, whether it's through the ECR section they've got together, the early career researchers section, um, or the newly formed uh, tourism and hospitality section, or the forecasting impact podcast, uh, or activities like this. I'd like to congratulate our, our ECRs and encourage them to keep going uh, with uh, their activities and I wish we were in the room so we can all give them a, a virtual or a, a, a clap but we can all give them a virtual clap and you know I see these guys as the future of our institute so please encourage them um, to to keep going. Um, you will see that uh, the institute Mike will show you that the institute is in a strong financial position um, and we are Again, still looking for ideas and new initiatives we want to give back to our members. Um, please feel free to reach out with anything you think that our members want to see and whatever makes our, uh, our membership and our institute stronger. So let me revert back to the ISF again um, and thank our sponsors who have been absolutely awesome uh, in supporting the ISF, Elsevier, Google, Amazon, Facebook, uh, institutions such as Monash University. My institution has been uh, absolutely uh, uh, great in terms of um, funding and supporting uh, Canaxis, Timberlake, consultants, uh, other institutions, Sydney University, University of Hovde, University of Virginia, SAS, uh, Throughput and Smart Software. Um, the last slide of my sort of introduction is to thank the people that support us to put this conference together. Um, I've had the privilege to work with, I think it's my third ISF as a organizing chair now um, 
I've had the privilege to work with some awesome program chairs. Uh, this year is Anastasios Panagiotelis from um, Sydney University now. And of course, the lady on the right that never changes, that picture, Pam, will stay with you for a while until we get to the next, next physical destination uh, from Thessaloniki. So a big, big thank you to both of these guys. Uh, you know, it's a great effort to put an ISF together and uh, without their support, we wouldn't do it. Um, and of course, behind the scenes, there's, uh, there's many, many others which we'll sort of uh, thank as we go along. Okay, in terms of what we're going to do next in this um, session, we'll have, we'll hear from Mike, we'll hear from uh, various directors, and then at the end of uh, our directors, we'll, um, we'll have some announcements to make, and then we'll open for Q&A. So hopefully we'll finish all this with, uh, in about, with about 15 minutes to go, so then we can open the floor for discussion. Okay, so I'll hand over to Mike for the Treasury's report. Thank you, George, everyone. Um, as Jordan mentioned, we continue to be in an extremely strong financial position with current cash balance of 680,000 US dollars. Note that the major sources of revenue, royalties for IJF and ISF occur in the first half of the year. So year end cash balance will end up closer to 600,000. The important point is that we have the resources to invest for the long-term good of the organization. The board continues to focus on growing membership, including students and industry practitioners, and expanding our influence through support of workshops and events, our partnerships, our two publications, and increasing student and research support. Next. Uh, as you see from the top line, in the upper blue line is our year in cash balance from 2007 to 2020. As you can see from the bottom two lines, the organization's overall profit each year is highly correlated with profit of the ISF. But even with virtual ISFs the past two years, making them free to members, we've been able to maintain a profit thanks to strong sponsorship, additional fee revenue for ISF workshops, and the significantly lower cost of a virtual event. So as George said, a big thanks to all the sponsors who are supporting the IF's mission and to the workshop instructors. Next. This strong cash position allows us to invest where we see good opportunities and to maintain or lower the cost to members for their ISF registration, which we've been doing since 2014. In addition, the cash provides a safe buffer going into another year of COVID uncertainty. It's important to recognize that in years we can't count on a highly profitable ISF, we have the reserves to carry on without significantly impacting our operations. In short, we don't have to make decisions based entirely on short-term financial considerations, and we don't have to select ISF sites based purely on the need for a profit. Next. <clears throat> Here's a sum summary of the 2020 uh, profit and loss statement. Note that we use cash counting by calendar year. In recent years, the organization has operated with annual revenue between 400 and 500,000. ISF is typically our largest source of revenue. Nearly 45% of 2019 revenue came from the very successful ISF in Thessaloniki. Of course, the virtual ISF 2020 had significantly less revenue, only about 45,000, mostly sponsorships. So our total income was down significantly for the year 2020. But because of the low cost of the virtual event, ISF 2020 still returned a profit of nearly 37,000. And overall, the organization had net, com, net, net income agency of almost 21,000. ISF is typically the main determinant of our profit for the year and other areas generally combined to break even. The other main areas are the IJF published through Elsevier, which has provided around 90,000 of net income each year. And then the overhead costs of operating the IIF and providing foresight as a benefit to members. In 2020, we weren't able to hold a live foresight practitioner conference, but when held live, the FPC does turn a profit. Next. It's been a big disappointment having to hold the ISF virtually these past two years, but on the positive side, the low cost of attending a virtual event has allowed many new people to participate. We, as you see, we have record attendance this year. Other initiatives we are pursuing consistent with the board's commitment to assisting students and researchers are of course making virtual events free to members, an increased budget for travel grants, which largely went unspent the last two years, 
matching the annual SAS contribution for the IIF SAS research grant, increased budget for IIF workshops, the forecasting summer school now in its fourth year and coordinated by board member uh, Pilar Brancella, and the democratizing forecasting workshops in developing countries run by Botman and Rastami Tabar of Cardiff. You'll hear more details on these in a few moments. And with that, as George said, uh, I want to encourage our members to reach out to the board if you have additional ideas for other initiatives we should be pursuing. George. Thanks, Mike. Um, we'll pass over to Anastasios and Elaine to talk about our awards and prices. All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. I'm Elaine Deschamps, and I'm coming from Olympia, Washington, where it's supposed to be 111 degrees today. So we're just trying, trying to stay uh, cool. I'll first talk about the Travel Award Grant as well as the IIF SAS Grant, and then I'll turn it over to Anastasios. So our Travel Award Grants, we're very excited to be uh, in person in 2022, we certainly hope. Um, we all have missed that really important part of the uh, ISF where we get to um, collaborate and work together in person. And, and grateful for the fact that we've had this virtual opportunity as well. So the IIF grants uh, are encouraged for researchers uh, from around the globe. And it's they're pri primarily aimed at students as of course we want students to uh, be encouraged to become ISF mem IIF members and contributors in the future to the IIF. And uh, this year they're used to support a local hub. And if that was not possible, then the award then goes uh, towards the ISF in uh, 2022, which will be in Oxford, UK. And so here are our awards, uh, award winners, uh, Maria, Martin and Madi, congratulations. And um, of course we did have, you know, fewer applications this year for obvious reasons. In 2019, before the pandemic, we did have a record number of applications, and um, we're hoping that we get uh, a record number of applications for next year. Uh, next slide. The IIF SAS Award is uh, to support research on improving forecasting methods and business forecasting practice, and uh, two $10,000 grants are awarded in the area of business applications and methodology and this is supported in collaboration with SAS as well as IIF funds. And there are uh, detailed information about uh, the application process on our website for both this award and the travel grant award. And the winners of the award will uh, be expected to um, pre prepare a paper for publication in the IJF. And the applications are due uh, October 1st, 2021. And if you'll go to the next slide, we have our winners here. We have Usain Syed Kazmi and Maria Pakovic. Uh, and that's in the winner of the area of business applications. And then in the methodology category, we have Ahmad Aziz Asad. And um, really excited for people to put those applications in. And um, we look forward to reviewing them for the next coming year. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm Anastasios. I'm also a director of the IIF, and uh, I was also the program chair this year, so you can uh, blame me if you got put into a session you didn't like. Uh, but I'm here today to talk to you about the student awards. Um, uh, so this is a really great initiative by the IIF, which we really see as uh, encouraging our forecasters of the future. Uh, so it's awarded to top performing students in undergraduate and graduate level forecasting courses. Uh, the students receive $100 and the complimentary one-year IIF membership. Uh, so for a course to qualify to receive this award, it has to be predominantly about forecasting, be taught at a reputable university, and be taught about an IIF member. Uh, so uh, if you could just move to the next slide. Uh, these are the winners since the last ISF that we had in, uh, in, in October of last year. Um, so Tyler Bove, Jenny Choi, Rena Horiguchi, Santiago Mancheno, Sanjing Park, Ni Tan, Estathia Statha, Nicholas Yanaku, Fan Zhang, Yan Zhang, and Jiu Zhang. So uh, congratulations to all of them. Again, let's give them a virtual round of applause. And uh, if anyone is interested in uh, having a course that they want their students to qualify for this award, just let us know. Okay, thanks, Tess and Elaine. 
Uh, we'll move on to regional chapters and themed sections by tail. Hey everyone, uh, I will be talking about the uh, IF community. Uh, this is Tao Hong from University of North Carolina of Charlotte. Um, next, please. Yeah, so here's a, a timeline. So uh, the, the sections were approved by the board in 2018 and uh, 2019. We had the first section um, uh, suite, uh, water, energy, and environment. And we also established our ECR, early career researchers. And that's when uh, we see these uh, activities at the 2019 ISF. And then 2020, we had another section established is macro four, uh, macro forecasting. Um, again, we see activities from these sections and ECR. Um, this year, uh, we have another section established, that's the uh, tourism and uh, hospita uh, hosp hospitality section. Um, and those all reflect in, uh, in the program today. And I want to emphasize uh, another big change in the, um, in the sections. So the suite leadership, we just had the first rotation. Uh, I become the past chair and then uh, Richard become the chair and then uh, you know, uh, the, the secretary uh, become the, uh, the vice chair and then we elected a new secretary. So uh, we see this as a opportunity for everybody to get involved. So rather than having uh, you know, the same leadership team you know, forever. So we are trying to you know, recruit new blood, new people uh, you know, uh, coming into this, uh, these organizations and uh, help make our community better. So next please. So we are looking for uh, new section proposals and new ideas. Uh, right now we have a regional chapter from UK. Um, if there are other regions that are interested in, uh, in establishing an IF, uh, IF chapter, uh, let us know. Uh, we currently have three theme, uh, theme sections, Suite, Macrofor, and THS. Uh, we're also looking for, for more. Uh, if you look at the program, uh, currently we have uh, many talks in supply chain, AI, machine learning, and finance. So these are potential areas that uh, we can, you know, maybe form a, a section together. Again, if you want to take, you know, take the leadership in these sections, let us know. Uh, also, we are looking for other networks similar to the ECR. So practitioners is, is one of them. So, um, you know, if you are one of the practitioners and you want to, you know, uh, grow a community together, uh, let us know. So we welcome any new ideas. Uh, you know, uh, the board is very supportive uh, to this uh, IF sections and uh, networks and chapters. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Tao. Very nice. Um, Pilar or team? Pilar, I guess. And while I'm waiting for Pilar, I, I would like to send a shout out to the Lancaster Hub. It's the only hub unofficially happening. Yeah. A couple of bottles of wines on the president tonight. <laughs> Is Pillar with us? Or well, Tim, would you like to take this one or I can present it? Sorry, I'm trying to find the unmute button. Um, yeah, so I'm... Um, Is Pillar Is Pilar's not, not here, she? I cannot see it, but that's that's Tim. Do you want to cover it? I can go for it. Yeah, I mean, I can I can maybe quickly go over it. So we've yep. we've had four four forecasting summer schools uh, in the past. Um, <clears throat> we started with econometrics in 2018. Last, uh, um, then we had Tim McKnighting in 2019, um, giving a summer school uh, renewable energy uh, forecasting was was last year, and, and this year we have now casting. Um, this is always a, a uh, it's, it's an event for targeting um, students and well uh, students primarily, but also um, you know if we have free free spots for other people who are interested in these uh, in these topics. Um, Pila is really the person who's driving it and um, who is who you really should get all the credit for it. Um, so it's a, it's a pity she can't sort of announce it. Um, we're looking still for. Um, for, um, for suggestions for next year. We have some ideas, but if you have something um, that you want to suggest, um, you know, reach out either to Pilar or to myself. Excellent. Um, just a little bit about the about the fees, Tim, here, that um, 
we're trying to make it, of course, affordable for our students and we support a lot of it. So, you know, um, yeah, there's not much more to say here. Okay. Um, certifications. Doris, uh, I've also was, uh, was sent a message that Washington DC is happening as well, but I cannot see them on camera, but a shout out to them as well. Okay. Doris? Yes. Yes. Uh, yep. Yes, uh, this is Doris from CSA University, China. I'm in the charge of the uh, certificate program. And, and this year, we have a new university joining our certificate program. Uh, Bentley University of uh, is uh, program is MSBA program. Uh, and Pam has done a lot of work on this. Thank you, Pam. And there are some, um, indeed, some ideas for the future plan of this uh, certificate program of I, uh, IIF. Uh, currently, um, uh, the, this program is associated with the cooperation uh, with the uh, universities, schools, or companies. We are thinking for the possibility to cooperate with uh, individual scholars or students. For example, we may establish some uh, courses or tests or some other requirement. And for the individual scholars or uh, postgraduate students who has qualified for uh, about our requirement, we can provide them uh, for uh, some certificate like forecasting practice for, uh, certificate or forecasting education certificate. Uh, this are, uh, these are some ideas about the future plan of this program. And thank you. Thanks, Doris. Yes. Thank you. We'll move on to um, workshops uh, with Aris. Ari. Yeah, sure. Thank you, George. I'm Aris Petros. Hi, everybody. Cardiff University. Um, I will be very briefly talking about, uh, well, a very interesting and particularly successful so far initiative of the IIF, our workshops. Uh, uh, the Institute of Forecasters supports and sponsors, I should say, informal meetings where experts in a particular field of forecasting, they gather to, well, to talk about the actual problem, research and solutions. Uh, uh, up to last year, we were running these events uh, in a physical fashion. Obviously, I mean, from last year, uh, uh, the, 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 the need for the introduction of virtual e events uh, came up and we have indeed revised, as far as should say, amended our guidelines to reflect the fact that from now on, it is highly likely that we're going to be seeing more and more virtual events. Um, something interesting that is associated with the workshops is that uh, all too often we have uh, special sections of issues or at least papers appearing in the National Journal of Forecasting. This is something that uh, obviously is subject to uh, discussion with, uh, uh, with Pierre, with the editor-in-chief of the International Journal of Forecasting and depending on the particular theme of the workshop. Um, as I've just said, we have recently revised the guidelines which are available uh, online. Uh, we think that it's a formative and comprehensive set of uh, what we are looking for. Please have a look if you are interested and please let us know of any questions or any inquiries. Uh, something very important uh, because, of the, because of the, I guess of the importance of the workshops in 2019, we decided to increase the budget to $40,000. It was less than that before uh, to collectively cover uh, workshops in any, in any calendar year. Uh, the, the budget per workshop can go up to $20,000, which again, I think is something really fascinating, is really important. Um, we are covering things that you would expect to see in the past. We have covered things on economic or macroeconomic forecasting and analytics, supply chain forecasting, uh, tourism, energy. Uh, but we are very keen also in seeing new, fresh ideas, new emerging areas. We'd be very, very keen to support uh, things like that. Uh, all the information is available online. It is perhaps worthwhile uh, picking up only one ongoing initiative um, um, that Mike also discussed earlier on in, when we started the presentation. This is the Democratizing Forecasting Initiative. It has been going on for some time. It's run by uh, Bachman Rostami Par uh, with the objective of uh, uh, drain the train as really in, in developing economies. Uh, Bachman will resume operations in, 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 in January 2022. For the time being, he's having some trial, let's say, uh, session in uh, Rwanda, actually, I think next week or uh, in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, let me close with the very uh, latest uh, 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 forecasting for social good workshop that actually took place uh, last week. Some of you, or quite many of you, actually, the numbers were very high, most probably attended that. Uh, everything is recorded. Again, you may wish to have a look and see how the workshops look like. As I said, for any inquiries, anything you'd like to discuss, please let me know. Thank you very much.
Thanks, Ari. Um, future ISFs. Now that's back to me. So, um, obviously, this year, 2021, we started off by thinking about um, multiple local hubs. Uh, unfortunately, as I said before, the pandemic did take the better of us, best of us. Uh, we unfortunately didn't have all of them happening, but um, Lancaster is going strong and Washington DC is going strong, which is great to see. Um, 2022, hopefully we all will see, uh, see you in Oxford. Um, the John Borden, who's the conference chair for 2022, will present uh, the, the 2022 conference um, at the end in the final session uh, after the final keynote by Professor David Hendry. Um, 2023, we've got June 25th to 28th, we're going to Beijing in China. Um, uh, Xuyang, Wang and, and, uh, and Fang Li and, uh, and their team uh, have been organizing and thinking about this conference, which is uh, great to see. And then 2024, we're going back to the US. The dates haven't been fixed. Um, we're working with uh, 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 Yale Kruska Cochrane in, 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 uh, in the Darden School of uh, Business School in uh, Virginia University. So um, we, we haven't finalized this, but we're working towards going to Washington. Um, and then 2025, we have an absolutely fantastic uh, application, a fantastic proposal by uh, Mohsen and Laurent um, to take the ISF back to Paris, back to France. And for the first time in Paris, I think we have never been to Paris before. So the future is looking great. We hope that the pandemic allows us to actually get into a physical space, uh, hopefully next year in Oxford. Okay. So that brings me to sort of the end of our, our um, presentation from our directors, which is good timing. Um, other directors and activities, I don't know why these have uh, gone in this order, but uh, the one director you haven't heard from is our new uh, secretary, IF secretary, which is Fernando Serino, who has got very important roles, um, amongst them being the editor for the Oracle and uh, controlling everything else uh, there is to control as a secretary. So next we'll pass on to um, Len and talk about uh, who will present to us um, a new initiative by Foresight, which is a Hall of Fame award winners and present the winners for us. Len. Len, can you hear us? Len, you, you need to unmute. Out. You need to unmute, yep. Okay, now I yep. think everyone, yeah, I think everyone can hear me. Okay, thanks, George. And hello, everyone. Uh, go back to the beginning, George. Yep. Okay, and one more. So, uh, Foresight started in uh, the year 2005 um, when we come out with the summer issue in a few weeks. That will be the 63rd publication. Uh, we had the idea to uh, create um, best paper awards. And the first round, we picked five or six from the years 2012 to 2017. Uh, next year, we'll continue on with the more current version. So I'm here to announce the uh, half dozen award winners from those earlier years of uh, foresight. The voting was open to every member. Each uh, winner will receive, in, in addition to the acclaim, a, a stipend of $500. So uh, here are the winners in no special sequence. First is, and go ahead, George, Mike Gilliland from 2013, forecast value added, a reality check on forecasting practices. Second, Stefan Colossa from 2008, can we obtain valid benchmarks from published surveys of forecast accuracy? Third, Paul Goodwin and Robert Files, good and bad judgment in forecasting, lessons from four companies, and that was back in 07. 
Fourth is why should I trust your forecast from Sanan, Dalek, and Paul? All of them are with us here on this broadcast. That was from 2012. And John Boylan from 2010, choosing levels of aggregation for supply chain forecasts. Finally, the final selection in this round, it was from Steve Morledge, and it was really quite impossible to pick which of his articles on forecast quality uh, would be chosen, so we chose the series. Steve wrote five articles on that topic, and the award to him is for the collection of five. So thank you, everyone. Excellent. Um, I have uh, skipped one of our directors, and I do apologize to Chris Fry. I uh, will get back to him in a sec. Pam has just warned me that I did. But uh, I need to find my slide for that, Chris. I apologize. I'll get back to you. But um, we can move on to um, Pierre, who I'll stop sharing, and Pierre will take over to announce uh, IJF uh, award winning papers. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Give me a second to be ready to share. Okay, can you see my screen? I hope so. Yes, yes. everybody see my screen. Great. So uh, I'm Pierre Pinson. I'm the editor in chief of the International Journal of Forecasting. Uh, it, it's a bit of a special moment uh, to share these awards. We now have quite a number of awards for, for the IGF. Uh, over the years, you know, we, we decided to have more awards related to more. Uh, let's say, uh, yeah, thematic um, research and, and papers. Um, but this is the main award that we have for, for the IGF. Uh, it's an award we have every second year. And for instance, now when we give the award, it's for the period uh, 2018, uh, 2019. So we, we don't really look at the most, most recent papers. We, we just give a bit of time uh, for the papers to grow. We are not, we have not reached yet this Hall of Fame uh, papers uh, that we just heard about, but, but still that's a bit of the idea. And so uh, what, what's happening is that uh, we ask for nominations. We already are lucky enough that we publish excellent papers uh, in, the, in the journal. We've not reached the stage that we get around 900 to 1,000 submissions per year, and we accept less than 10% of these uh, submissions. So that's quite, um, I'll say, it, 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 it's, it's quite a cut. So the papers we, we get at the end, I think, are, are very, very good papers. And here, out of the 120 eligible papers, uh, we receive nomination, 21 unique nominations for, for this, all these papers. And actually, some were nominated several times, some of these papers. Um, and we shortlisted out of these nominations five papers based on the text of the nomination. And these are the, the five uh, nominated and shortlisted papers that were competing for the award. So we have this first paper by Grandzera and Sheikh Potian, uh, Predictive Relative Forecasting Performance and Empirical Investigation. The second paper by Steers and Dasonneville, Affect versus Cognition, Wishful Thinking on Action Day. Then the third paper by Ardia, Bluto and Boot, uh, Questioning the News about Economic Growth. The fourth paper by Lahiri and Zhao, International Propagation of Shocks. And the final paper by Matriakis Piliotis and Nassima Kopoulos, the M4 competition. When we get this uh, nomination and shortlisting, then we share this list and the text from the nomination with all the editorial board members. So we have 50 editorial board members plus the senior editors, and then we have a vote. So after a vote, uh, we reach the conclusion on our best paper award. And since there were also some other papers that were um, highly ranked, we decided we would give another award, an outstanding paper award for, for the runner up. So now is the time that I announce the best paper award. And this uh, best paper award will receive a plate, an engraved plate, and also a prize money of $1,000. And out of the five papers, it is David Ardia, Kevin Bluto, and Chris Boot. We are getting the best paper award for 2018-2019 for this paper about questioning the news about economic growth. I have to say it's an extremely interesting paper. First, it is very well written. 
Then the topic, I think you, we've all noticed, you know, that an increasing interest into text data and this idea of sentiment analysis. And we got two nominations for these papers. Uh, both the nomination insisted on the fact that it's really, it is the state of the art in, in doing sentiment analysis and application in this, in this area. So it was really a pleasure uh, to see that this paper got selected. And I would like to contribute to congratulate uh, David, who I think is here, and maybe some of his co authors are here. Uh, really well done and uh, well deserved for this best paper award. Oh, yeah, I, I hope David has heard that. <laughs> then we, we actually, um, I had a bit of, um, of a struggle. Uh, to define how many uh, outstanding papers awards uh, we should uh, we should give, there was a, a clear uh, runner-up paper, uh, but all five papers that were nominated, I think, got uh, excellent uh, reception by our readers and by the editorial board. I had to pick one, and this was the one that received the most uh, nomination and the most votes after the paper by David, and uh, it's not such a surprise, I would say. <laughs> Um, this end competitions have been very strong over the years and after nearly 20 years of waiting, you know, when the M4 competition came, uh, there were a lot of expectations and this paper was also extremely well received. It is quite short, but it gives such a nice overview of what this M4 competition is about, uh, what are the key findings, and it also invites us to think more about what should be forecasting competition in the future. So the IGF Outstanding Paper Award for 2018-2019 is given to Spiros Machidatis, Evangelos Spiriotis, and Vasilios, um, I cannot say his name fully, Asim Mankopoulos, uh, for their paper on the M4 competition. So there also, uh, please join me in congratulating uh, the authors. And um, yeah, I hope they are here also to, to hear about this award they are getting. They will also receive an engraved uh, plaque but this one is mainly for the prestige as there's no prize money for this, uh, for this award. So thank you very much, everybody. And uh, I'm sure we'll have some very good uh, awards also in the coming years. Uh, we always receive uh, very good papers, excellent papers uh, at the IGF. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Pierre. Let me share my screen again and call um, upon our other new director, who's uh, Chris Fry. Um, something close to to my heart, I guess, is, um, is the practitioner section of our institute. I think it is a very important um, part and something that this that sort of uh, makes us uh, a little bit special from other uh, academic, academic focused institutes or organizations. Um, and I would like to welcome um, Chris Fry on the board, another practitioner, and um, he can he talk to us about uh, his plans with a practitioner session. So, Chris, can can you see my screen? Yes, thanks, George. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, we just put together a couple of uh, uh, notes here on the practitioner section, which is not officially formed yet, uh, but uh, we're looking to actually formalize that as one of the sections uh within uh iif and you know obviously the opt-in membership and and i've jotted down some of the ideas that we had uh here for what that could entail some are already active some are, are just kind of in the formative stage and we really welcome uh, uh input from the group on uh other things that you'd like to see so we're happy to you know, we're here to serve and, and put together a practitioner section that actually, uh, um, you know, supports uh, the group. Uh, so some of the ideas, uh, first of all, we have a practitioner track at ISF. So let me call out kind of what's already in existence, a very solid um, track. I think it's very well attended um, and, and uh, I've been involved in that uh, for the past couple of years and, and really gotten a lot out of it myself. Um, we also have the Foresight Practitioner Conference, uh, which is already active. So that's uh, that's an ongoing activity. And then some of the, the ideas we had for future, um, one is to have a kind of a practitioner panel 
uh, you know, a couple of panelists uh, talking about different issues in practice. So we may, you may see that on the uh, ISF 2022 agenda. Um, also something like a communication list or, or Google group or, you know, directory. So practitioners can, can communicate with each other and share ideas and ask questions. Um, uh, something that I've seen in other uh, organizations is something like a practitioner roundtable or executive roundtable where there's, you know, maybe one or two representatives from various companies um, that actually not only can share ideas and, and um, you know, ask questions and meet live, but also uh, kind of provide feedback from the practitioner community to the board uh, in a more formalized way where we're actually, you know, kind of collecting those those practitioner views uh, uh, formally. So that that's another uh, thought. And, um, you know, possibly sometime in the future, we could look at actually having something like a forecasting practice impact award or, or practice oriented competition where we where we actually look at, uh, you know, have have practitioners uh, or practitioners in partnership with academics kind of uh, uh, putting in an application and presenting their work on impact that they've had through the practice of forecasting uh, in real world problems. So that's a few ideas. I, I look at it as a, you know, just as a start of, of kind of getting ideas on the chalkboard and welcome more uh, input from folks. So feel free to reach out to me uh, or to anyone on the board if you have ideas there. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Um... I will share my screen again as we're going to walk, go to the last part of our presentation, which is pass over to um, Gloria, our ex-president, uh, to announce a uh, fellow. Gloria? So Gloria with us. Oh. oh, okay. So I can do that. I think it's a it's a an easy one to do. Um, so every year we accept nominations for recognizing contributions to the AAF, and um, every year the board will vote uh, on the nomination. Um, and this year we I have the great pleasure of announcing that uh, the latest AAF fellow to be added to that uh, very. Uh, uh, specialist is Professor Rob Heineman from Monash University, my good colleague and, uh, and friend, um, for all his contributions to uh, any part of the world uh, in terms of forecasting, IJF, IAF, uh, organizing, ISFs, and so on. Uh, and of course, his, uh, his uh, tremendous uh, contributions academically and, uh, and in a practitioner sense, and um, you know, the list goes on and on. Uh, many congratulations, Rob. Are you around? Do, would you like to say a word? Or thanks, George. Yeah, I'm around. It's uh, close to midnight, but uh, I'm still up, and it's a great honour to be uh, elected a fellow of the IAF. The IAF is my very favourite professional organisation. I've been a member for twenty something years, and uh, uh, it's um, I'm delighted that uh, to be to be elected a fellow. So thank you very much to the board of directors and to those who nominated me. Absolute pleasure. Okay, um, we've got a few minutes left for any questions. If anybody would like to unmute and ask some questions. Um, there was a problem that we had earlier on with Zoom, which uh, meant that uh, I was the host for most of the sessions because I've set them up and nobody else could join a session without me leaving. And that is the same thing with a webinar because I'm the only one licensed with a, with a webinar. So, um, We'll probably have another five minutes of Q and A, and then five two. We'll cut this short and move over to the keynote, the opening keynote address. So please feel free to unmute your microphone, or um, yeah, let's have a chat, a question, suggestion.
I was hoping I could have the the floor for a couple of minutes, if that's right. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, could I share my screen, if that's right? Yes, absolutely. Yes, thank you. Uh, there are a couple of more awards to announce, and uh, I think, uh, given that we have a lot of people now around, I think that's the most appropriate time. And this is another award for the IGF, um, and uh, this particularly refers to the best paper from the. Um, no, what I did probably right. Let me try to fix this. Okay. Uh, for the use right. uh, yes. I could come. Right. Let me let me try to fix my screen. Um, right. Here we go. Um, so can you see my screen now? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so this is the MIGF award. So this is uh, sponsored by University of Nicosia and Spiros Mafedakis. And effectively, similarly to the normal IGF awards, here we have also two awards the best M paper award from the M4 special issue and the outstanding M paper award for the uh, again for the M4 special issue and we had a certain, a certain amount of nominations received and the award committee which was uh, Spiros, Pierre, Elaine, myself and the Vagilos um, discussed about that and we decided on the two awards and uh, the best paper award uh, for the M special issue M4 is uh, by Kenneth Kenneth Lichtendahl, Casey Lichtendahl, Robert and, and Robert Winkler, and, oh, and the, the, the title was Why Do Some Combinations Perform Better Than Others? Whereas the Outstanding M Paper Award is uh, authored by Rob Heinemann. So, double congratulations to Rob, both for the fellowship and the uh, paper award, a brief history of forecasting competitions, and both papers uh, are given some money and uh, a certificate. Thank you for this. Sorry for these two minutes. Excellent. Photos, I really like your hat. Yes, we are leading to one, right? <laughs> okay. So, yeah. um, it seems that everyone's gone quiet. So I guess we've covered everyone with what we've presented. Uh, please feel free to reach out. We are looking for new initiatives. We are looking to see what members need, what members think is valuable to them, um, to you, and whether you're an academic practitioner, student, uh, or any other part, um, we would love to hear from you and we would love to sort of, um, you know, give back to our members as much as we can. Okay, so I guess we'll leave it there and uh, we'll, I'll go and open the webinar session uh, and we'll see you then about eight minutes time for our opening keynote address.